Here he is, Nico House, back on the mother of all talk shows. Uh, I want to throw you a, a curveball, uh, Nico, because um, I, I didn't have time to tell you I wanted to ask you about this. But I do, uh, because I'm much occupied by uh, the, co the consequences of uh, he who should not, cannot be named and what's happening to him at the moment. I wanted to ask if you knew what was happening in the investigation of uh, Jeffrey Epstein's client list. And, and Ghislaine Maxwell is in jail forever for trafficking kids. To whom? To whom was she trafficking them? And why isn't anyone apparently investigating that? Yeah, no one's investigating it. Um, and like I said about the situation with who he who shall not be named, I just found it extremely bizarre that this major media conglomerate would invest a years, oh, more than a years actually, worth of resources into a, into investigating a man over sexual assault or or sexual misconduct allegations, as if it's supposed to help the public in any way. If it is true, then may they get justice. If not, then may justice be served to Russ. But when it comes to this client list with Epstein that we know, we know Epstein was guilty. We obviously know Glenn Maxwell was guilty. But at this juncture, we actually might have to make a phone call to the Ghostbusters to find out who they were trafficking those kids to. Because as far as we can see at this point, they're, they're all disappeared. They're, they they must have been ghosts. Because according to the media, according to the Justice Department, uh, both here and the justice system over in Europe, they don't exist. And that shows duplicity within our justice system. And it really reveals that this situation, although they may or may not get justice, was really never about justice or genuine accountability. It was merely about demonizing someone who is speaking out against the system. And that is once again, uh, um, regardless of whether or not the allegations do turn out to be true. Well, of course, that's exactly what they're doing with uh, with RFK Jr. Uh, they are uh, sidelining him, slandering him, censoring him. And now we've got guys pretending to be U.S. Marshals with a gun under every uh, shoulder and lots of spear ammunition turning up at his rally in California uh, just a few days ago. And Joe Biden will still not provide state security for a guy called Kennedy, whose father was murdered in California. And he's got a statue of the original RFK sitting behind him in the White House. What's that all about? Uh, it's bizarre, but I will say, if I was RFK Jr., I really wouldn't rely too much on Secret Service because, well, we've already seen how that has gone with Kennedy, members of the Kennedy mem uh, family in the past. So his private security, not the police force, like the local police force, not the FBI, his private security caught the imposter and took care of it. Uh, but I will say that it speaks volumes to the fact that Joe Biden is at best unconcerned with the safety of a man who was running for president, who was part of a family that unfortunately has a history of being assassinated, specifically when they are challenging the system or the status quo. At, at, so if, God forbid, something happens to the man, but like this is a reality that we have to deal in because we understand the times that we are in and we understand history. If something happens to the man, then Joe Biden is complicit in that. And he is it's viewed even worse to me because not only is he complicit, but he directly benefits from it. So it's extremely problematic. Yeah, uh, what's even more extraordinary is it doesn't even seem to be a big story anywhere. It's a story that seems to me ought to be being reported, not just everywhere in the United States, but actually, it's a global story. It's got everything. Jack Kennedy gunned down. Bobby Kennedy gunned down. Bobby's son is running for president. And the U.S. will not protect him. I mean, why is that not a big story, Nico? Uh, it, it, there's also a, another 
aspect of the story that should probably also make it a bigger story, which is that this actually violates uh, primary orthodoxy. So Kamala got uh, Secret Service very early on in the primary, and people forget about that. Barack Obama was not leading the primary, nor was he holding a federally elected office when he was running against Hillary Clinton in the primary. And he got Secret Service protection because of all the death threats that he had received. Now, once again, RFK has received those same threats. He literally had someone make an attempt on his life. Thank God it was un unsuccessful, but it, it happened. And once again, and it can't be stated enough, he's a Kennedy with challenging the system. He is a target. And the fact that this story isn't bigger, the fact that the mainstream media isn't challenging Joe Biden on this, once again, it, 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 it's not only just revealing to, to how much they could care less if something was to happen to, to, to Kennedy, but it shows how complicit they are. Almost as if, whoop, if it happens, it happens. They, like, and, and given the rules changes from the DNC and every way that they've uh, for uh, uh, foundationally changed their their primary process in order to directly hurt Kennedy and help Joe Biden, it rolls right in line with the narrative, which is what makes it a bigger problem. Mind you, the security cameras in that darkened theater were sharp, weren't they? I mean, I could tell you, I won't for reasons of propriety, what a bra size Lauren Boebert has. Uh, because the camera in the dark uh, was able to bring us in glorious <laughs> clarity uh, her uh, her décolletage uh, on a date with our with our boyfriend, and this is now everywhere in the United States mm -hmm. and around the world. Some things are important, some things are not. Nico. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly the way it's being treated. Um, Democracy is being trampled upon right now. Uh, in the case of RFK Jr., once again, uh, people don't know because it's not being discussed because the Democrats are co claiming that there's not really a primary that's going on, while simultaneously telling New Hampshire Democrats that they must violate their constitution and allow South Carolina to be the first state in the Democratic primary, which is not allowable. They actually have to go through Republicans to approve of that process. It, and so it's not going to happen, and they're going to punish New Hampshire for holding their primary on time. Their Iowa is no longer, the Iowa caucuses, the first caucus in the nation, is pretty important. They're not, allowed, they're not caucusing. They're doing 100% mail-in ballots. Yeah, like what could go wrong with 100% mail-in ballots <laughs> in the Iowa caucus? In these two states, by the way, both of those states, Joe Biden lost. Yes, of course, and they want South Carolina because uh, because if you ain't black, uh, if you don't vote for Joe Biden, you ain't black. That's why they want exactly. South Carolina to be the first, isn't it? Exactly. You know that it, it will for, for me. It was such a wake up call to watch uh, Jim Clyburn reach into his closet and blow off the dust off his best tap, tap dancing shoes and literally endorses segregationists and ahead of one of the most important elections of all time. Uh, but that's what they're counting on, is that he can save himself the embarrassment because he didn't just get beat by Bernie in New Hampshire and Iowa. He got beat by Bernie, Buttigieg, Klobuchar in New Hampshire, and Warren. So they're trying to save themselves the embarrassment, but yet they keep saying they don't feel threatened by RFK Jr. So, you know, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Which one is it? Either you're threatened or you're not. But in, in my opinion, they clearly are threatened. And not just by RFK Jr., obviously, by Cornell West and Ways as well. So we'll see how it plays out going forward. But um, people need to know about how the Democrats are still rigging this process because it is our democracy um, that's being trampled upon. And what about Trump? Is he going to make it to the starting gate or are they going to successfully hobble him? I think he'll make it. I think he'll, I mean, people forget that in America, <laughs> land of the free, home of the brave, you can be a felon and be the president of the United States of America. People forget about that. You could be in jail. You know, you can make some adjustments. So bring in some blue carpet, set up some secret service. I mean, some of these rappers who go to jail probably have better security than the president of the United States and better and more luxury as well in their jail cells. So they can do whatever they want to to Trump at this point. It seems like the reality is 
every time they try to pin something on him, he becomes more popular. Like it is like a direct correlation. And every time something comes out with, about Hunter Biden, they try to pin something on Trump. Joe Biden's numbers fall and Trump's numbers rise. So at this point, they're just poking, a, I would say a sleeping bear, but Trump is definitely not sleeping, but they are poking the bear. And they're really, in, in my opinion, the Democrats are in a very impossible situation. Because if RFK runs, this might be the one time, because he said that he might run his third party. He said he would seek alternatives if the Democrats keep uh, engaging in these shenanigans. So this might be the one time where they are correct. He will be a spoiler. He will take 10 or 15% of your votes, and the rest will vote for Trump. And it will be very hard for you to finagle your way around these voting machines like we know the Democrats like to do in order to get Joe Biden back in the White House. I think if Kennedy runs as a third party candidate, Biden loses. Uh, Harris loses even more heavily if she's the candidate. Uh, because I don't see any way in which Bobby Kennedy doesn't get 10% of the vote. And if you take 10% uh, of uh, that great vote that Joe Biden got last time, 81 million people apparently voted for Joe Biden last time. If you take uh, 7 million of those off, he loses. Yeah. And more importantly, even before we even get to the election, by name recognition alone, he has a high probability to make the debate stage by the requirements that have been uh, previously instituted. So he can not only win just in a straight up election, but he could directly challenge both Donald Trump and Joe Biden in a, in a way that the entire world would see. And I hope that that comes into fruition. I, I mean, I people should know Me by too. now, I don't believe that America has a democracy. So, you know, it is what it is, but the conversation is important because conversations bring change.